Okay. So the subject is uh, basic hematology and the subject code is BMLS 2002. And in today's lecture, we will discuss about nuclear hematology. So nuclear hematology means it is the use of nuclear isotopes or radioisotopes in the diagnosis of any blood parameters. How we are using this uh, radioactive isotopes for uh, detection of various uh, blood cells, blood elements, blood components, and uh, blood uh, uh, things. Okay, so how we are using this uh, radioisotopes in diagnosis for uh, blood uh, disorders is called as nuclear hematology. So if you see the syllabus, so in the syllabus, in the fourth unit, we have the following topics. So first one is a hemostasis. Hemostasis means a prevention of bleeding. Then second one, physiological properties of coagulation factors, mechanism of coagulation, and that uh, we discussed. Then the third topic is radioactivity, definition, half-life, physical decay, and units. So now we will discuss about this radioactivity. So radioactivity will come under this nuclear hematology. So the main idea of this nuclear hematology is compared to the traditional diagnostic approaches such as uh, usage of uh, ELISA, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, or by usage of other uh, uh, immunological tests like a rapid test, our uh, radioisotopes sensitivity is high. So we can able to even detect nano quantities of component in the blood with the help of nuclear hematology or with the use of this radioisotopes. So that is the primary advantage of radioisotopes. So before understanding about this radioisotopes, first you need to know the basic things about atom. So we know that atom composed of protons and electrons. Apart from protons and electrons, atom also consists of neutrons. Neutrons are the one that will bind these protons together to, to keep them stable. Okay, so they are the normal constituents of uh, uh, atom. But say for example, let us take an atom of hydrogen. So hydrogen will have one proton and one electron, okay, along with one neutron. Okay, if it has one neutron, then it is called deuterium. So here the atomic number is same, but the atomic weight has been increased because of presence of this neutron. So the, the second form of this uh, hydrogen atom with uh, in the presence of neutron is called as deuterium. So deuterium is uh, somewhat heavier uh, component of hydrogen atom. And deuterium can be stated as a isotope of hydrogen. Sometimes we can even able to detect two neutrons in a single hydrogen atom and that can be stated as a tritium. So tritium means uh, two neutrons and one proton, whereas a deuterium means one neutron and one proton, whereas normal hydrogen will have one proton and one electron. Okay, so these are called as isotopes. The various forms of the same atom can be stated as a isotopes. So isotopes are always uh, have higher weight, higher weight than a normal atom. So such uh, atoms, are, such components are called as isotopes. And uh, there is one uh, peculiar characteristic property of this uh, uh, isotopes. The main important property is their instability. Because of presence of more neutrons, these atoms are tend to lose their neutrons. The excessive neutrons will be uh, loosed it will they will be escaped from this atom in a definite period of time and that loosage of neutrons can be stated as a atomic decay of half life so this loosage of neutrons is called half life so whenever the neutrons are releasing from the atom and that will uh, release an energy and that energy can be able to detect and that can be detected by some instruments and they will they can able to detect the uh, these atoms, okay, this released components, and that is called isotopes. So isotopes have this property of releasing their uh, uh, <clears throat> particles, okay, to become stable. So we can able to use these isotopes in the detection of any biological components by attaching this isotope to a biomolecule. Upon attachment with a biomolecule, now we can able to trace, we can able to detect, we can able to locate, we can able to track any biological component of interest, uh, interest, such as red blood cells, white blood cells, or any cellular proteins, receptors, uh, hormones, 
even trace elements can able to detect with the help of this isotopes so the basic definition of isotopes is isotopes are the atoms of same element which contains same number of protons but different number of neutrons so isotopes always contains uh, different number of neutrons either neutrons can be excess or neutrons can be less so because of this variation in this neutron number they are called as isotopes and isotopes are instable they will release some energy okay so this is the basic definition of isotopes then uh, the uh, so i have two more definitions of uh, uh, radioactivity so what is this radioactivity so isotopes as we already discussed they are unstable and they will release some particles and those released particles can be stated as the radioactivity the energy released by any isotopes can be stated as a radioactivity typically we have three types of radioactivity we have alpha radiation beta radiation and gamma radiation so alpha radiation occur due to release of protons and uh, neutrons which is seen in nuclear bombs okay whereas beta radiation is seen due to electronic uh, configuration due to electron jumps we will get this beta radiation whereas this gamma radiation is occurred due to high energy electromagnetic photons because of this high electric uh, electromagnetic photons we will get this gamma radiation okay so these three can be stated as a radioactivity so radioactive decay so the definition is radioactive decay is the process by which an unstable atomic nucleus loses energy by radiation a material containing unstable nucleus is considered as radioactive three of the most common types of decay are alpha decay beta decay and gamma decay of all which emit, uh, involve emitting one or more particles those particles can be either electrons protons or even high energy photons can be released by these atoms so such thing as, is called as radioactivity okay so the de second definition of radioactivity is radioactivity is the release of high energy particles or waves being emitted or released from decay or breakdown of an unstable nucleus of an atom so an unstable nucleus of an atom will get a, a release they will get uh, they become unstable and they will release any particles particles can be either protons it can be neutrons or it can be even high energy photons can also be get emitted hence resulting in th three types of radioactive uh, energies such as alpha radiation beta radiation and high energy uh, electromagnetic photon radiation or simply gamma radiation okay so then <clears throat> the third definition that i would like to introduce is half lives okay so half life means it is the rate at which a particular radio isotope decay is described by its half life okay so the time period it took for an atom to decay or to release a particular component it can be a neutron electron or uh, um, or even proton that release of these three elements from an atom the time period it took to release any one of this component can be stated as a half life so the basic definition of half life is the rate at which a particular radio isotope decay is called as a its half life so the half life is defined as the time that it takes for one half of the sample of radioactive element to decay into another element so the half life of a radio isotope is dependent only on what type of radio isotope it is if it is a large radio isotope then the half life will be for a long time if it is a small isotope or small atom with one only one or two protons then the radioactivity time will be very less say for example i have given a table here the radioactive nucleotide of lithium 8 has a half life of uh, less than second so it is the half life of lithium 8 is around 0.838 seconds whereas krypton is around uh, 3.16 minutes whereas sodium 224 is around 15 hours whereas iodine 131 is around 8 days so depending upon the complexity of this atom the half life depends and the highest half life uh, till now we recorded is around uh, uh, it is present to the uranium 235 and it is around 703 million years so it took almost 700 e million years just to, to decay or just to, to release one proton or electron or neutron from an atom okay so that is called as half life then so as i said these terms need to be noted for uh, uh, progressing to the next topic so so far i discussed about isotopes isotopes can be two two types stable isotopes and unstable isotopes and radioisotopes 
So radioisotopes are the unstable radio, uh, unstable isotopes, and this will release radioactive decay. And radioactive decay will be measured in the form of half life. So these are the terms that you need to remember. Now, the how we are going to use this radioisotopes in biology, or particularly in hematological uh, studies. So the idea is, if I want to if I want to detect a cancer cell, say for example, blood cancer cell, a plasma cell cancer. Okay, so uh, let us assume that this is a plasma cell cancer. Now, this plasma cell cancer has a target protein. Say, for example, if you take a uh, uh, helper T cells, helper T cell has a surface receptor called CD4. So, let us assume this has a CD4 receptor. Okay. Now, this CD4 receptor will be uh, targeted by a uh, by an uh, antibody, and this antibody is linked with a radioactive component, our isotope. So. Uh, I cannot detect this cell directly, but uh, with the help of labeling an isotope to a uh, receptor or antibody, we can able to detect this radiation. Okay. Our second example is tumor cell. So this tumor cell has been uh, binded with a radioactive component, and now we can able to detect uh, this radioactivity upon introducing it in this into the body. So this is the idea of uh, usage of radioisotopes in the hematological diseases or diagnosis. Now, so what are the typical uses of radioisotopes in the hematology? So these radioisotopes can be used in in vivo studies. So those used in in vivo studies involving labeling of cells in blood or bone marrow and the use of labeled plasma albumin. So here the radioisotopes will be given directly into the body. So such thing is called in vivo uh, labeling or in vivo studies. So in 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 vivo studies, we will label these radioisotopes. Uh, within the body and we can able to detect any particular cells that we want in the body then second one is investigations involving surface counting over organs such as bone marrow spleen liver and heart we can also even detect any abnormalities to the bone marrow spleen liver and heart and in in vitro studies so in vitro means outside the body in the lab on a petri dish or in the glass slide we can use this ra uh, radioisotopes for detection of any cells in the body and the radioisotopes are also extensively used in imaging procedures such as a uh, uh, PET scan or even <clears throat> uh, high end uh, nuclear uh, scans can be done with the help of this nuclear or uh, radioisotopes. Okay, so there are some uses of radioisotopes in hematology, such as cobalt 60 is used for radiation therapy to prevent cancers. It can be any cancer, such as bone cancer, and iodine 131 is used for location, locating brain tumors, monitoring cardiac, liver, and thyroid activities. Carbon-14 is used for study, to study the metabolic changes for patients with diabetes, gout, and anemia. Carbon-11 is tagged on glucose to monitor organs during a PET scan. Sodium-24 is used for study uh, blood circulation. Thallium-201 is used for determination of damage in heart tissues and detection of tumors. And technetium 99M is used for locating brain tumors, damaged, he damaged heart cells, radio traces in medical diagnostic procedures, such as imaging of organs, blood flow studies. Okay. So these are the few uses of radioisotopes in hematology. So if I'm asking this topic or this question in the exam, you must write this table. You must plot this table along with these four uses of ra uh, radioisotopes in the hematology. So this is all about the uh, radio isotopes. So a quick summary of uh, today's lecture. So in today's lecture, we discussed about the usage of this uh, radioactive isotopes. So in the fourth unit, we have radioactivity, its definition, half-life, physical decay, and units. So coming to the basic definition such as atoms. So uh, atoms with uh, abnormal neutrons is called as an isotope. Isotopes uh, will release energy and that energy can be stated as a radioactivity. That can, We have three types of radioactivity. We have alpha radiation, beta radiation, and uh, High electromagnetic, high energy electromagnetic photonic radiation, which is due, uh, which is occurred due to protons, uh, electrons, or by even photons. Okay. Then we discuss about half life. Half life means it is the time that taken uh, from an unstable atom to release its uh, either neutron or electron is called as half life. And half life depends upon the complexity of the atom that we are using. And uh, now we are using these atoms uh, for the targeting any biological cells and detection of these cells in the body. So the typical uses of radioisotopes in hematology are in in vivo studies of involving labeling cells or bone marrow, 
then investigations involving surface organs such as bone marrow spleen liver and heart and in in, in vitro studies of radioisotopes and isotopes used as a part of imaging procedures then uses of radioisotopes in hematology cobalt 60 is used for radiation therapy to prevent cancer iodine 131 for uh, uh, location of brain tumors, carbon-14 for metabolic changes, carbon-11 for uh, glucose tracing, uh, sodium-24 is for steadying blood circulation in the body, calcium-201 for damaged, uh, to detect the damaged heart tissues, and technetium-99M is used for other uh, uh, brain tumors detection. Okay, so this is all about the nuclear medicine. Thank you very much. I'm going to end this session.